So how's training dogs, and more specifically, usually puppies? It's not a terribly difficult thing to do, but it does require a lot of consistency. Otherwise, you're never going to succeed with this. All right? So before I get into the two main ways to house train a dog, I want to cover some rules. And um, some of these are more aimed towards puppies. The first one is, uh, and that is that your puppy can only hold his bladder as many hours roughly, as months old he or she is. So if you have an equal puppy, he can hold it roughly two, two and a half hours, max, all right? Expecting him to do it any longer, it's, it's just, it's not realistic. You're setting yourself up for failure, for having false expectations. However many at months old they are, that's how many hours they can roughly hold their bladder, okay? So that means that we need to be constantly taking the puppy out, it, depending on how old they are, to a week old puppy every two to three hours, and then it continues from there on. Um, the way that we handle going outside is important. We want to make sure that we reward the, the behavior of going to the bathroom outside. So every single time that we take the puppy outside, we need to have treats with us and very, very high reward treats, treats that we normally don't give them. Usually I like to use people food, chicken, cheese, hot dogs, something of very high value, okay? And when we take the puppy out to go to the bathroom, we take him, we put him in their spot, we tell them whatever our word is, go pee, go poo, and we wait. The second that they are done, wait until they finish, don't interrupt them while they're going, but the second that they finish, you are going to give them three treats in a row. Puppy peas, that's a good dog. One treat, they chew. Two treats, they chew. Three treats, they chew. Every single time. We want our puppies to see that, wow, going to the bathroom outside is a good thing. I, number one, I never get chicken. And number two, I never get three pieces of treats in a row for doing anything, except when I go to the bathroom outside. So using the, treat, the three treat method helps to speed up house training, okay? Another thing that, if possible, that you should do is try to let your dog go outside and make the bathroom area the same spot. Try to keep it the same spot, um, uh, same surface, okay? My dog, for example, only goes to the bathroom on gravel because that's where what I have on the side of my house. He never, had, never once has he gone to the bathroom on cement. 90% of the time he goes on gravel and sometimes he'll go on grass for like a dog park or something but never once have I seen him go on cement. And this helps with consistency, that your dog knows that this feeling is the bathroom area, that this feeling is um, where I'm supposed to go to the bathroom, okay? How do we handle accidents? Because of course, there's gonna be accidents. Nobody can ever have a puppy that will never have an accident. How you handle these is critical, okay? If you walk into a room and there's a pile of pee, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You find some poop behind the couch, there is nothing you can do because it is way past the point. The only time you can do anything with your dog or puppy is if you catch them in the act, all right? If you find a pile of poop and you take your puppy and you put their face in and go, no, bad dog, look what you did. They do not understand you're mad that they pooped in the house. They just think you're mad that they pooped. And now they go, well, these humans are crazy. I got to poop, but they get mad when they see it, so I better hide it. I better go try to go behind the table or go hide and poop, you know, under the desk. And you actually make the problem worse, all right? So when we have accidents, if you don't catch them in the act, nothing you can do. If you do catch them in the act, we want to interrupt the behavior, okay? So we're walking along, and all of a sudden we're playing with our puppy, we see our puppy squat down, get ready to pee. We're going to go, ah! And we startle him, and the puppy's instantly going to stop. We're not doing it to be mean, we're not doing it to, to harm him, we're just doing it to startle the behavior. The second they stop, we're going to grab them by the collar, harness, you can even pick them up if you want, and very quickly we're going to go outside to our spot. We put them down, and then we're going to give them some time, right? I usually go for about, uh, give, them, give them about five minutes, just to really see if they have to go, right? 
it's very easy to put them out there and they don't go immediately and we go, oh, they don't have to go. And then what happens? We bring them back inside and they pee in the house. So have some patience when you bring them out there. Walking down the hall, puppy starts to pee, we nerf them. Ah! Because we caught him in the act. We rush him outside, let's go, let's go. We're not angry, we're not mad, we don't get, we don't, we do nothing except interrupt the behavior. You can clap, we just, we, we're just stopping the behavior from peeing inside. We're not angry. We take the puppy out, we go to their spot, we wait. They finally go to the bathroom, good job, good one, two, three. We treat them, okay? And accidents are going to happen. I have never met somebody who has been able to successfully have a puppy with who's never had accidents. I'm a professional dog trainer, doing this for 10 years. When I got my dog, I had accidents with him, all right? You're going to have accidents. That said, the way you clean them up is also critical, all right? Soap and water, vinegar, not good enough. You need to buy Nature's Miracle. Uh, product section, I have a link to it on Amazon. Nature's Miracle has an enzyme in it that breaks down um, the, the, or a chemical rather, that breaks down the enzymes in dog urine that attracts them to go back and pee in the same spot. You've ever been to like a dog park or something, you'll see a dog goes over and pees on one spot, and then another dog will go over and pee on the same spot, and then another dog will pee on the same spot. Maybe even you notice your own dog pees in the same spots in the backyard, okay? There is an enzyme in urine that the dogs can smell, that we humans can't, that attracts them to go back to the same places. So if you're just using paper towels, that spot is still there. With Nature's Miracle, if we clean it up correctly, we get rid of that, that scent, and it's going to help the dog to not go back to the same spot. Okay? So these are some uh, general rules to keep in mind with house training, and they're very, very, very important. Now. Now that we know the rules, we're going to get into the two ways of really, you know, uh, some more specifics rather, I guess, of uh, house training. The first one is not my favorite way, but I'm going to talk about it because I know people do like this, and this is crate training. All right, you've probably heard this before, and crate training is basically locking your dog in a crate any time that you are um, not able to supervise them, okay? Now, I don't like crates. Um, I use it as an absolute last resort because I feel that they get abused, okay? Uh, there's, a, there's a difference between dogs liking crates and us providing them with a crate, leaving it open, and them going in and out as they please, and us locking a dog in a crate for eight hours at a time when we go to work or whatever it is we do. So. I am not a big fan of crates. With pals training and puppy training, they can be useful, but you have to really be on top of it, okay? What's gonna happen is anytime that you're not able to supervise your dog, they go in the crate, all right? Now, the size of the crate is very important. When you have to get the uh, appropriate size, if you have a super large dog, you're gonna be buying multiple crates, which is another reason why I don't like to do this. The right size. There should only the the crate should only be, uh, you know, uh, long enough that they can stand up and that they can turn around once, and the height should only be tall enough that they can just end up without taking the top of their head. It has to be small, because the idea behind the crate is that the dogs don't have to go to the bathroom in the same place they sleep. So if we put them in a small crate and it's it's small, it will help them to hold their bladder until we can take them out. Now, the thing with the crate train is that it requires you to constantly be taking them out every two hours, every three hours, every four hours, all right? If they have accidents in there, which they will, as much as we want them not to, at some point they're going to, it's very messy to clean up because it gets on their bedding, um, it gets all over them. So crate training, it, it does it work? Yeah, it can work, but it's, it's, it's a lot more effort, all right, on the humans to constantly remember to take the dogs out. There's, it's, it's, it's on you to constantly take them out. Out we go. If they don't go to the bathroom, you put them back in the crate. All right. Um, I prefer to save this as a last resort because, like I said, I just I'm not a big fan of crates. So the second method is what is what I prefer to to do because it gives our dogs more freedom. It gives us humans more freedom, 
and it makes house cleaning easier on us. All right? Yeah. I don't have an official name for this method. Um, I guess we can call it the, the gate method. All right? And what we're going to do with this is you're going to set up a, a play pen or X pen, um, they're called. They're like the, the metal barriers. I'll have links for these. Um, but you're going to set up a big pen, right? And you can get different heights, which is nice for people with big dogs instead of buying multiple crates. You buy one pen as big as it goes. Um, and the pens, can you can set them up in, you know, multiple, um, multiple angles because they're, they're flexible. So the reason I like the pens is because you can give your dog more freedom. Rather than being confined to a small crate, you put them in the pen, and in the pen they can have a water bowl. They also have room for, you know, um, some toys. All right. The important part is they have room for a pee pad. Now. The pee pads are very useful, okay? It's our little water up here. The pee pads are very useful because this allows us to leave the puppy in his in his camp, in his uh, uh, gate, in his pen, and he has an option to go to the bathroom on the pee pads. When you first start off, you put multiple pee pads. You put one there, you put one here, you put lots of them. You put six in his little pen and he starts peeing on them. They're sent it to attract him to go on it. And the times that you can take him out to go to the bathroom, great. We take him out to go as much as we can. The times that we have to leave for four hours or five hours, we don't have to sweat it because we know he's got his pee pads to pee on. He's got all this room. He's got access to water, to toys. His little bed is over here, right? He, we don't have to worry about him being stuck in a crate. Now, do we, does he use the pee pads forever? Absolutely not. We start off with all six of these pee pads. And what we start doing is we start weaning them away. So we start off with a lot of them, and then after maybe two weeks, we pick one up. And now we only leave five pee pads down. And after another week, we start picking another one up. And now we're down to four. And the next week, we go down to three. And then pretty soon, we go down to two, and then eventually one, all right? And now we're down to one pee pad. Now, the timing to get rid of that last pee pad is going to vary, all right? It varies on how well you've been doing with the house training, how consistently your dog uh, goes outside, how much you take him out. Generally, I see around three to four months is the time that we're at one pee pad and we're able to, well, that's, that's probably uh, pushing it a little bit. Let's say, let's say six months, okay? By three to four months, you can be down to one pad. By six months, you can probably start testing out, taking that all together. And now that it's out altogether, the only other place that your dog knows to go to the bathroom is outside. So he holds it, all right? Now, I'm gonna add a little pad back in there just for now. So we have our little one pee pad. Another thing you can do if you want, I mentioned it's one thing to give our dog a crate and give him the option. The cool thing with these X-Pens is you can actually take the crate and attach the crate right into the X-Pen, okay? So that's the crate there. So the crate opens into the pen. So then you could put their bed in there instead, gives them more room in there. Um, just another option, something to think about. But this method is the crate method. Um, I guess we can also say the pee pad method. And this is just what I prefer to, for people to use for the dogs. I think it's better for the dogs. It is easier for the humans. Um, you know, anything that we can do that makes it easier to train our dogs, why not do it? I know for myself, I didn't want to have to get up every two to three hours when my dog was a puppy to take him outside, so the pee pads work very well. Uh, I was able to have a much um, more, you know, restful night as, as a puppy owner than a lot of other people who want to do the crate training method. Uh, this, this works. Uh, you know, 95% of people that, that I work with with their puppies, this is what we do. There's 5% where we have to use the crate because not really, it's not really the dog's fault, it's just that it, it's, it really falls on the humans. For whatever reason, this, this, somebody's not doing something right and um, you know, it, it's not working. So we have to use the crate because the crate, it does work as well. It's just a little bit more dangerous in, in my opinion and not, well maybe not dangerous, but it's just, it, it's not as good of a quality of life I guess for dogs. I, I want the, the, the puppies to be able to have more freedom. 
they need to be able to get up and, and move around, and especially if you're gone for long periods of time. A lot of people get puppies and have full-time jobs, which is fine, but you can't leave a puppy in a crate for eight hours. It's, he needs water, he needs to be able to move, he needs to go to the bathroom. So that's why I like doing the um, gate method with the, the pee pads a little bit better, okay? So that's house training. Um, common question, how you know quickly just should my dog get this? When should my dog be fully house trained? Um, it depends on a lot of things, the size of the dog, the smaller the dog, smaller the breed of dog, the more often they need to go out, the shorter they can hold it. Um, it depends on the intelligence of the dogs. There are certain breeds of dogs that are much more intelligent than other breeds. They pick this up faster. Um, it depends, number one, on the humans, how consistent you are with following all of this information. I would say on average, now average we're talking from a you know, five pound chihuahua to a Great Dane, we're just averaging all dogs. I would say around six to eight months is generally the time you shouldn't really be having any more accidents. All right. Um, again, that's a very broad statement. It's going to vary for different breeds, different dogs, how consistent you are. But that's generally should be a goal you should aim for somewhere in that in that range. Um, okay, house training. That is the the two methods. Um, crate training using the gate method. Remember all the rules. Go slow, have consistency, and you'll get the house training thing down really easily. So humping um, can be kind of an embarrassing behavior when your dog does this, but it really shouldn't be. Uh, humping, believe it or not, most of the time it's not a 